The tank's a beautiful war machine, known for being destructive, yet armored enough to protect its men inside. And despite what we all think, all tanks are different. You have your light armored vehicles to your fully tracked war beasts. The invention of the tank leads back to more than a century ago, during World War I. The British Army was in dire need of coming up with a vehicle to help break up the front lines, as the fighting seemed to go nowhere. They wanted it to be armed with powerful naval guns and steel to prevent machine gun fire from killing its crew. This development led to what we call the tank. In World War II, the tank became one of the battlefield's new toys. Nations such as the Soviet Union, Britain, and especially the Germans were developing bigger, better tanks. They wanted them to be as armored as possible with the best guns to outperform their enemies. Tanks such as the infamous German Tiger to the Soviet's T-34 all innovated new technologies to try to make their tanks firepower the best and their armor impenetrable. But what kind of math goes behind this? Before we get into the mathematics, I'd like to explain that these equations are solely based off estimation. Armor quality is not considered, hence why it would vary in real life. The first equation that I would like to talk about is the sloped armor equation. For the sloped armor equation, TL represents the final thickness, TN represents the normal thickness, and theta represents the angle of the armor. This equation tells you the effective armor that a tank will have at a certain angle. To show you how this would work, here's an animation of what I mean. As you can see in the animation, you would have to go through more material when the flat plate is sloped at 45 degrees rather than standing at a straight 90 degrees. So pulling this example into a tank, you could tell that having sloped armor would be better because the shell has to penetrate through more material. A good example of this would be on the M4A3 Sherman. The armor thickness of the front glacis of the Sherman is 63.5 millimeters, but at 47 degrees, the effective armor of this tank is at 93.1 millimeters. A 30 millimeter difference can make it harder for a shell to penetrate that. The second equation that I will talk about is the Krupp formula. This is a formula made back then during the time of battleships. It was made to estimate shell penetration. The equation goes as is, with B representing the overall thickness of armor penetrated in decimeters, in the end we'll convert it to millimeters, V representing the velocity of the shell, P representing the mass of the projectile, D representing the projectile caliber, and K being the resistance constant. In this case we'll set it to 2400 as it's the average. By plugging in the numbers from a tank stats, we are able to figure out how much armor the shell is able to go through. A good example would be the BR-350A APHEBC shell from a T-34 STZ. You can see that once the numbers are plugged in, you will get 0.08. When you move over the decimal places 3 points over, you will get the answer that is 80 millimeters, meaning that if this specific shell penetrated a tank, it would go in about 80 millimeters. Alright, now it's time for the fun part. Since we couldn't go out and get some tanks to shoot, we'll have to use another method. We'll be using a realistic Russian vice I mean tank shooter game War Thunder as a way to show you how effective sloped armor can be. And a good way to show you how effective shells can be. Patrick, I can't move without both both my tracks. You're are inside up. my tank! Both my tracks are pure. Oh my god! Okay, Sergei, turn up hard bus. Q Russian bias opening. Alright, so here you can see two tanks, the T-34 STZ and the M4A3 Sherman. As you can see, the T-34 has currently just shot the M4A3 in the front. You can easily see that the Sherman's front is hard to penetrate due to its sloped front. But when the T-34 shoots at the side of the Sherman, the shell can easily penetrate because of how powerful it is. But don't forget, the Sherman's side is also 90 degrees flat. So it's easier for shells to penetrate it in the first place. Now, after World War II, the Cold War takes place. Both the West and the Russians were developing better shells, and the days of regular steel armor were outnumbered. The Russians started developing composite armor, which featured layers of ceramics and glass. Over time, composite armor was the standard for modern MBTs, and all the modern MBTs such as the Abrams Challenger and Leopard all feature it. 
Unfortunately, I cannot talk about this composite armor as its details are usually classified, and I would probably require a more complex equation. I also cannot talk about Sabo shells, which are also being fired off the guns of MBTs today. But here's some example footage from War Thunder of an Abrams being shot by a KV-1. With the steep angles of the Abrams turret, most late World War II tanks such as the Tiger II, say for example, would penetrate the regular steel armor of the Abrams. But with the use of composite armor, it would be harder for the shell to reach in. Same principle would be applied if a Sabo was shot at it. And then the Abrams fires back at the KV-1, completely destroying it. The 105mm Sabo round is thin enough to penetrate up to 380mm of armor, making it very effective on the battlefield. So it's as simple as an equation to figure out how effective sloped armor is, or how damaging a shell can be. Despite the fact that we can't consider the quality of armor, I at least tried showing you that sloped armor can make a difference, and how over time, shells have improved to increase damage and penetration. Thank you for watching. See you next time.